There have been a ton of new releases in the makeup world, so today I'm going to be demoing them for you, rating them, and doing small reviews as we go. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, then welcome. My name is Christina and on my channel we talk all things beauty from my own experiences. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave any comments that you have for me down below. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like brands have been coming out with new products left and right the last couple of months. I wanted to kind of talk about these new releases and I've been trying out a lot of these products for a while and I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on my thoughts on them. Some of these things I have not yet gotten to try very much, but we're still gonna be including them in this video since they are newer products. Since I do kind of have thoughts formed about a lot of these products, I decided that I wanted to rate all of them. So I'm gonna be doing it on a rating scale from one to five, and I thought that this would be really fun to give you guys a better idea of how these products have been performing and if I really would recommend them or if I think you should pass on them. So let's talk a little bit about the rating scale that I mentioned. So we're gonna be going from a one to five on each of these products. One would be pass, I don't really think that it's anything for me. And if it's something that you are kind of like on the fence about, I would suggest that you would pass. Two would be not for everyone. This product is pretty good. I could make it work if I wanted, but I could see it only working for a group of people, say like in a skin type or complexion shade, something like that. So it'd be something that like, yeah, it's not terrible, but it's not for everyone. Three is just like, it's fine. It's the most neutral I could do with it. I could do without. It's something that I'll probably reach for here and there, but it's not something that would be top of mind right away. Four would be, it's in my rotation. It's a good product. It's in the rotation. I'm using it every so often and it could possibly become a five or it could possibly become a three where it's like it's fine you know so it's something that like I have other products that I really enjoy but I'm still using this as well because I do enjoy this product and five is going to be this is a standout new product in my opinion this is something I've been using practically every day that I do my makeup it's something that I debate do I want to wear this or do I want to wear that one because I like them so much type of thing not necessarily holy grail just yet because because I feel like I'm just now getting to know a lot of these products, you know, because I've only had them for a couple months or a couple weeks at that, but it's definitely something that I'm quickly learning to love. Okay, now that we have that rating scale out of the way, I'm gonna be doing my face of makeup with these products and we're gonna be going in order. So I wanna start off with the brows and we're gonna be talking about these Lawless products. Now, a lot of these things I have featured in TikToks and Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts. So if you wanna see very quick bites about some of these products, then go check those out if you're interested. But I'm starting with the Lawless Shape Up Soft Fill Brow Pencil. This is in the shade Cacao. This pencil pencil is very, very soft. I really enjoy this to define my brows. So I'll go on top and bottom and then I'll use the spoolie on the other side to just brush it out because it's super malleable, very easy to blend that pigmentation. It has this kind of flatter duck bill type of shape on the pencil. If anything, you're gonna wanna be mindful about using a light hand. It's super easy to use. Um, you could easily just wipe it away if you mess up or if it starts to get a little messy This is definitely the type of brow pencil where you use it if you want to fill in the majority of the brows Not the best if you want to achieve hair like strokes for me I would rate this a four out of five. It's in my rotation I do really enjoy this product and I don't have like a lot of complaints with it Next is the lawless brow wax. This one is in the shade medium slash dark It's a long wear strong hold and conditioning brow wax and I'm just gonna run this through back and forth on the brows first to really coat them and then I'm gonna brush it out. I feel like it has really good hold compared to other brow waxes. I think that it actually helps to hold my brows up throughout the day. It's not too dark, it's not too warm, not too cool. It's the perfect like neutral brown shade and it doesn't alter the color of my brows too, too much when I use like a brow pencil underneath it. It kind of just complements it. But I really like this one. So for me, the rating of the brow wax is a five out of five. I love it, I use it 
every day so far since I've like tried it. I've been using it every single day opposed to any other holding type of brow product. Next we have the e.l.f. Power Grip Plus Niacinamide Primer. So this is going to be a sequel to the Power Grip Primer, the green tubed one, and it does have niacinamide in it so it's supposed to help with the pores, it's supposed to help even out skin tone and balance those oils throughout the day. Now I like this, I feel like it's nice and moisturizing. It's definitely stickier, so your products are gonna be able to hold on to this product as it wears throughout the day and as you apply them. I like putting this all over the face. I feel like you have a lot of time to blend it out before it gets too sticky to blend out any further. And once I kind of smooth it out, I like to just kind of press it in just cause I feel like, you know, it pushes it into the skin more. I do have both of them right here and I put a little dollop of both on my arm because I want to compare the texture of them. Right off the bat, the original one does feel a little bit stickier. I'm assuming that the niacinamide one is a little bit more slick because of that niacinamide that's in it and it seems to dry down a little bit thinner. I think that if you were to just use them without comparing them, it would be a very, very subtle difference. I can barely tell a difference. I'm just nitpicking so you guys can kind of, you know, tell what the difference is. You can also kind of see with the pink one, if you look at like that big air bubble, it kind of is more thin. You can tell because the air bubble like goes through the product a lot quicker. Um, I feel like that is an indication that it's thinner. Who's to say? Not I. <laughs> but if you find that this one is a little too tacky or it dries down too quickly, maybe try this one out. But for me, I don't see a huge difference. But I do like this product. I would say it's a three out of five. It's fine. Um, I use it every so often, but I do kind of rotate through a lot of primers. So maybe that's the reason. It's a good one. So I actually have two foundations that I want to touch on. Obviously, I'm only going to wear one today, but I want to talk about the other one as well. I do have separate video reviews on both of these products, so I'll link those in the description box down below, but it's these two. The one I'm gonna be using today is gonna to be the NYX one, so we'll get to this one, but I wanna talk a little bit about the Makeup by Mario one. This is a luminous finish. It looks so skin-like, very natural on the skin. It gives you medium buildable coverage, so you can definitely get a solid medium, but you could also have like a light medium or light like sheer coverage. The color match, I really do enjoy it. I think it's really nice. The undertones don't seem to pull too orange for me. I have this in 14-0, so that's 14 olive. I'm typically a neutral tone, but the 14-0 definitely does work for me. But the nice thing about this is that the shades are supposed to be flexible, so you could possibly kind of jump between two shades if, you, if it's necessary or if you need to. I feel like it does the best whenever I set it down with powder and throughout the day it wears the best like that really like this one five out of five i've been enjoying wearing this whenever i want that very natural skin like look to the face and i just want something that'll really perfect it and give me that sort of like ethereal glow it doesn't add any grease to the skin so it doesn't add any crazy oils it doesn't make me look too oily throughout the day and i just really enjoy the finish of this and it truly looks like healthy skin whenever i wear this one the foundation we're using today I've talked a lot about it's the NYX bear with me blur tinted foundation in the shade number 11 medium neutral so as you can see that shade is very dark definitely doesn't look like it's a match on the skin however whenever you blend this foundation out it definitely turns into a lighter color I've seen other people kind of say the same thing which is very interesting for a foundation typically you have an oxidation where it gets darker on the skin so if you do want to try this foundation out I would definitely suggest to go into Ulta and swatch them they do have like an area for NYX where you can try out the foundations and kind of swatch and stuff that's what I did because I definitely would have gotten it wrong if I just looked at it in the tube. This is a matte foundation and typically I don't go for matte foundations. However, this one really perfects the skin in a way. And also other products like my cream bronzer, cream blush, liquid, um, contours and stuff like that they all go on to this foundation very smooth but I do like the dry down of this I feel like I can get away with just powdering the t-zone and it would last 
fairly well throughout the day but if i need it to last last like i'll powder my whole face you know so this is what that foundation is looking like all in all i really enjoy this i've been reaching for this one a lot and i would rate this one a four out of five the only reason why i don't really feel like rating it a five out of five is sometimes i do want that dewy natural like sheen on the skin and i'm not really in the mood for a matte foundation i definitely feel like if you're gonna wear a matte foundation you kind of have to like wear a full face of makeup for it to look very concise at least for me that's how I feel sometimes with a dewy finish foundation I can kind of justify doing a light makeup but with this I like it because it really perfects the skin I think the coverage is very good and like I said it does kind of help the products on top really shine through and just look the best I like the way that this feels on the skin for the amount of coverage I get. And this has definitely been in my rotation. I've been using this like every other time I do my makeup and I would highly recommend it. And the price point definitely is better than something like say that makeup by Mario foundation. Next we have the e.l.f. camo color correctors. I have the peach shade as well as the blue one. I haven't used the blue one yet, but I have used the peach one. So let's go in with this. Honestly, I kind of feel like I don't need the blue one right now. The main reason why I got this is because it says that it visibly offsets orange and yellow tones for all skin tones. I do have the LA Girl like blue pigment, but that's like a bigger bottle. I thought this would be nice to just chuck in my travel bag or just, you know, like have on my desk or something. It just seems accessible. But I mean, we're just gonna base the color corrector rating on this peach one. So I'm gonna be using this. This is supposed to counteract dark spots for fair to medium skin. And because I have foundation on already, we're not gonna see the full effects, I don't think. But I'm just gonna put this on any spots that I may have. I do have darkness around my um, mouth but i'm mainly going to use this on acne spots i'm going to use it on my freckles that i want to cover up you know i tend to like my color correctors to be a little bit more tacky like a little more dry so it just like holds that pigmentation you know wherever you put it but this i feel like it's just right for what i need it for and I'm just going to kind of tap in that color corrector. So maybe I should have used this under the foundation because I feel like you can kind of see the peachiness of it. But it's okay. We'll just use a concealer on top of it. But I'm just going to blend all of those spots out. I do feel like this gives me some added coverage. I feel like whenever I use this, it kind of helps those spots not look gray underneath my foundation or underneath my concealer. Because you know, sometimes when you try to just use concealer on dark spots, it definitely still shows through a little bit gray. I feel like this helps to tone that down just a bit. It's definitely just a touch of color correction, which is not a bad thing. And for me, I would say that this is a three out of five. It's fine, it's not completely necessary for me at least. Maybe I'll use it under my foundation next time and like update in the description if it makes a difference. But a three out of five, I'll continue to use it. I like this tone. I don't think it pulls too peachy. I don't think it's too orangey or anything like that. And it's nice. Just using my Kosas concealer concealer everywhere I use that color corrector. Okay, now we're going to be using the Rare Beauty um, Positive Light Under Eye Brightener in the shade Medium. So I've only used this a handful of times to be honest it has like this metal tip applicator which is really interesting because the product doesn't really stick on there very well because it is a smooth metal tip but what i want to do is i want to use this under the eyes before i use any concealer so i want to use it underneath and then if i need to i'll use it on top of the concealer as well i've tried it on top of the concealer and it does make my under eyes very bright also the color i think is was just a little too bright for me on top so I want to see what it looks like under the concealer I feel like maybe this was too much <laughs> it's okay it is a very very thin consistency I would say that's a good thing because it doesn't create a heavy layer wherever you put it because typically at least from what I've seen a lot of people like to layer this product I still do appreciate that this medium shade though does have a tint of warmness like a little bit of yellow instead of just stark white so it's a good shade if you typically go for something that is very brightening under the eyes it would be a good option for sure look at 
how brightening that is. That's insanely bright. <laughs> what I wanna do is go in with my concealer. If you don't necessarily like going a lot brighter with your concealer, this product I think would be a good booster product, like a booster brightener for concealers. So say you don't always like going brighter, but you know, once in a while you do, this would be a good product to use for that because you could essentially brighten up any concealer that you have with it. So for me, my rating of this product is a three out of five. It's fine, I like it just enough. And I think that it's really good for what it is. It brightens like it says it will. I like the thin consistency of it because it doesn't add a heavy layer onto the face. And I can kind of use it interchangeably with any concealer that I feel like it or I could use it alone just like a bare face or if I'm feeling like I didn't get enough sleep and maybe my under eyes are really dark. This is something that I would use on a bare face because that consistency is very ideal for like a no makeup makeup look. So three out of five because I don't reach for it every time I do my foundation, but I do really enjoy it whenever I use it. Next, I want to talk about these right here, the Flower Beauty Liquid Contours. I have the shade deep and medium and I've been using the medium one a lot right off the bat I want to say these are a five out of five I've been using it every time I do my makeup and I just really enjoy the way that this looks on my skin so these are definitely a very good alternative to the Charlotte Tilbury liquid contours but from reviews from other people talking about those and the consistency and stuff it sounds exactly the same honestly I'm going to use this real techniques 241 brush to blend this out I think that the medium shade is the perfect cool slash neutral shade for me because it is this thinner consistency it almost feels like a liquid gel so it blends out really nicely however you don't lose that pigmentation that pigmentation stays there and you can easily blend it out to where it just looks like this perfect perfect contour look at this side compared to this side so effortless so easy this doesn't pull too warm it's not grayish on my skin tone either it's just the perfect perfect shade the shade medium specifically i think the deep shade will work the best on me in the summertime right now i'm really enjoying this medium one i can blend this out to where it definitely just looks like a shadow i have noticed that this dries very quickly though so you have to work with it rather quick or else if you let it dry down, it can get a little bit patchy. So be warned, be careful, make sure that you're blending this out right after you um, apply it. But it was $14.50, I think, and that's kind of expensive. I mean, considering how much product is in here, if I were to squeeze this now and then lock it, like, look, it's already flat and I've used it... I don't know, just a handful of times. You don't need to use a lot of product, but it also just doesn't seem like it's a lot of product, you know? So do with that information as you will. I would buy it again just because I like it that much. And I think comparatively price-wise to the Charlotte Tilbury one, it's way better. I'm just gonna use a little bit of the Flower Beauty Spotlight Liquid Highlighter. This one is not new. Oh no, that was too much. <laughs> Whoops, I squeezed way too much out. All right, now that we're all contoured and looking nice and sculpted, I wanna talk about this. This is the Persona Cosmetics Multi Stick in the shade Jam. This is the newest shade that they came out with. It's the newest one in my collection. And honestly, if you've been here for just a little bit of time, you will know I really like the Persona Multi Sticks. I think they're a wonderful formulation. I absolutely love the blendability of them. I think that's the absolute best part. Like look at this pigmentation. It's insane. You barely have to get any product on there, but still, even though it's super pigmented, it's super easy to blend out. They're some of my favorite cream like stick products right now, and I have a lot of them. I, I really enjoy my cream products. Now this one alone without like that highlight underneath it just gives you a very natural flush, a very dewy finish, but it does dry down slightly matte, but there's definitely still a little bit of sheen because it is a cream product. Oh no, I don't think it's blending on that highlight very well. 
That highlight messed me up, dude. <laughs> I like this shade. I feel like it's a very universal berry tone. I think it would work on a lot of skin tones. On me, it can be very, very pigmented. So, you know, be warned, be careful. Sometimes I can go in a little, a little heavy handed, but it's okay. I'm just going to use the same foundation brush to kind of stamp that in. For me, I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5. It's definitely in my rotation. However, berry shades are not my most favorite type of blush, so I'm not using it every single time I'm doing my makeup, but I definitely love having this shade. It's such a fun pop of color, and it just, the formulation of these cannot be beat. I love the Persona Cosmetics Multi 6. They're so good. I'm looking patchy right here, but that's definitely because of that highlighter. Um, and I know that because every other time I've used this multi-stick, it's looked flawless. But this is the first time I'm using it under this highlight. And sometimes this can dry down kind of funny. Okay, I want to show you guys. So I powdered my face and I lost a little bit of the intensity of this blush. So I'm going to go in with a little bit more right on top. And it goes on so effortless. It doesn't pick up that powder. Berry blushes, though, for me are sometimes harder to pull off just because... There are definitely intense blush shades on me. This one, like I said, is a really good option because it's it's not too purple, I think. Oh, I wanna talk a little bit about these. These are the Kiss Impress Lashes. Now, I'm not gonna put them on because honestly, I just kinda feel like wearing mascara today. But these are nice. I have a full video on these. I'll link it in the description box down below. But essentially, they have pre-bond on them, so they already have an adhesive, so you don't need glue. You can literally just put it on underneath the lash, and it'll stick on there. Definitely a little bit of a learning curve, but I will say that I've used these a couple of times, one time with the adhesive, and then another time I used glue because I like the style of this spiky one a lot. So for me, I'm rating these a four out of five. I really do like them. I use them every so often. I can definitely see myself using these. And especially for me as someone who's constantly creating content. So these are nice because I can pop them on very easily. And if I decide that I don't wanna wear it the rest of the day, or if I decide I wanna take it off at the end of the day, I can kind of just remove them and have like no cleanup essentially from glue because you know how glue can get really tacky and you kind of have to definitely get in there and clean it i don't have any of that with these so these are such a good option in a pinch i think they're great if you just want to wear it for a couple hours and it's a way better option than a strip lash in my opinion because i hate strip lashes they always lift on me they they're harder to maneuver around the eyes so they are a little bit pricey though i will say but i'm still kind of waiting for the refill packs where it doesn't come with the tweezers so once i see those i'm definitely going to pick those up man that highlight's really messing me up i'm not liking the way the highlight is looking on the skin but i digress so the next products i have they just launched they are the tower 28 multi-use one liners and they actually sent me the shade fill me in like a week or so ago and i've been playing around with that one a lot and i just received the other two colors which are draw me and work of art and i'm so excited about these so these are really fun like i said they're multi-use and i've actually used this as a wing on my eyes and i've also used it to line my lips and to fill in my lips i really like these because even though they are a like traditional pencil liner they still feel really creamy going on i don't have any skipping whenever i used it as a liner i didn't have any sort of skipping when i used it on the lips it was very nice as well so this is the shade draw me this is work of art and this one is fill me in so those are all of the shades let me do a little bit of like a swatch here so you guys can kind of see here is fill me in draw me and work of art so i actually want to use draw me as like a, a baby wing right here just use my finger to like smear that there you go it's so creamy they go on very pigmented and i'm so glad that they came out with the shades that they did because i feel like they're very universal shades for a lot of people and i'm just gonna take a little bit of that and kind of smudge that into my lash line all right and that is what it looks like 
as an eyeliner. I love that shade. It's the perfect brown. I love brown eyeliners too. For my lips, I think I want to use the shade Work of Art because I haven't used this shade yet. I've only used Fill Me In. Oh, that's the perfect like defining shade for my lip color. Am I weird? I love the smell of like pencil, regular pencil wood. It's so nostalgic. <laughs> All right, there you go. Very cool toned. I think that this would be so beautiful paired with like a lighter shade, you know? These for me, I'm gonna rate these five out of five. I love the flexibility of them. I like the three shades that they came out with. I feel like they're very universal whether you use it on your eyes, your cheeks, and your lips. I think that Tower 28 just does their products so well. So now I wanna talk about some lipsticks. These are the e.l.f. Oh, face satin lipsticks. I have a whole video on these. So I'll leave that in the description box down below for you as well. But let's talk about these as I pick a color. Let's do vocal. So these, I really like them. Again, they seem to be kind of reminiscent of the NARS Audacious lipsticks in packaging and formulation. I love the satin finish to these. I feel like they just make them really rich on the on the lips. Like they just look more plush with that satin look versus something say like a matte. I think that these have really good pigmentation. Like the pigmentation on these, you can get one swipe and you have very, very good coverage. They do last a pretty long time for like a traditional lipstick, you know? I just did like an ombre look and I didn't mean to do that. I like that. <laughs> just gonna blend it with my fingers. You can definitely just dot this on the lips and get really good pigment. You can definitely dot these on the lips and get really good pigmentation. You don't have to like swipe if you don't want to. Obviously, you don't have to do that with any lipstick. I think the satin look definitely helps to not emphasize the lines within my lips, which are like my big pet peeve is when you can like see a lip product emphasizing my lip lines. The only thing is these, none of these shades are like holy grail status for me. Like there's no shade that I'm like, I have nothing like this in my collection and I need this you know what I mean they're good shades they are very standard nice shades but again there's nothing that like really speaks to my soul when it comes to like a lip color I don't know if that makes sense but if you guys have looked at my channel lip sticks and lip lip products are definitely like my favorite type of makeup so I don't know, that's a pretty big deal for myself. All in all, the way that I would rate these, I would give them a four out of five. They are in my rotation. I do like having the option of having this texture and this lipstick within my collection, but it's not gonna be my end all be all lipstick. And just for fun, let's use one of these Lawless lip plumpers. So here are the Lawless glosses. I have Velvet, George, and Cherry Vanilla right here. They do go on a little more sheer than that. I just did a really heavy swatch so you guys could see the differences. And I was leaning towards George, but now that I've seen the swatches, I kind of want to do Velvet. So let's go in with the shade Velvet just to finish this look off. Yeah, I like that. Ooh, I like that. All right, guys, and here is the finished makeup look with all of the brand new products. Well, not brand new, but a lot of the new releases in the last couple of months. What do you guys think? Which products stood out to you? And are there any products here that I talked about that you are already a fan of and that you would agree on my ratings for? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, please let me know if you like this type of video. I would love to continue to do these throughout the year because I feel like it's just better to have like a concise like all-encompassing review for new products because I know that at least for me I get very excited about new launches and I'm like I gotta have it the marketing these days are so good for beauty products and I definitely get sucked into it so I'm hoping that by doing a video like this it kind of helps you to understand a little bit about how these products work at least from my experience again and if I think it's worth having if I think it's like okay to have but not you know holy grail or if there are products that I'm like you should buy this new release because it is as good as people say it is let me know in the comments down below if you do find these helpful and I will continue to do them 
as new products are launched. So that's everything for this video, guys. If you liked it, found it helpful, enjoyed it, or both of those things, please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!